got out the big variac and uh, pulled the stove out. This little one's only good for about 3 amps or so and uh, need considerably more. Ditto the rectifier I was using was uh, starting to overheat. The diodes are supposed to be good for 75 amps but I think they just needed bigger heat sinks. Um, these are good for 120 amps and you see the heat sinks there are quite chunky. Some rather large smoothing capacitors. A bit of instrumentation so at the moment we've got 137 volts going in at about 11 amps. So somewhere around 1400 watts. Still using the signal generator to drive things along. An isolated bridge driver and I've gone from the IRFP 250s that I was using to 260s. Um, these are, they were rated for 15 amps, these are rated for 50 and more importantly their RDS on is about half that of the 250s. Still only 200 volts but uh, that should be plenty for now. Having a look at the waveforms, although pretty <laughs> not exactly what it looks, uh, looks like. I'm just using a homemade current uh, transformer there and it's yeah I think I need to put it on the other side of the bank for a start. Okay I'm gonna melt some aluminium. And there we go. MOSFET's barely warm. Oh, 28 degrees. Two on the far side of 33, which is nothing really. Capacitors about the same, 33 degrees. This should be cool enough to touch, yep. And I'll let that cool down. It's cooled off a bit, it seems to be solid in there. Let's see if it'll come out. Mm. I've got some fairly solid looking stuff at the bottom there. Let go. Still Ooh. a little bit warm. That is a good solid bit. And there we go. Melted aluminium. So this time I'm going to try table salt. Completely 
Let's see if we've made a pillar of salt. Got a mini pillar of salt. Yeah, so this is the stuff that was in the bottom of my little cast iron pot, which is uh, pretty nasty. Fair amount of carbon in there. It's quite solid. Solidish, anyway. And this is my little mini pillar that was uh, in the middle. So what was granulated table salt and nice little solid pillar. And salt melts at about 800 degrees so we exceeded that quite nicely. Alrighty so this time we got a few bits of glass which melts at about 1200. Well common silica glass is about 1200. And I think that's what this is. These came from just some generic bottles that I was messing around with uh, making rollers for my Van de Graaff generator. These are the necks I broke off. I retrieved the glass, but uh, it kind of fell apart while I was trying to get it out. Um, still with some fairly good sized chunks, it was definitely melted in there. So that's not too bad. Another new addition, I've got a little 12 volt water pump here. So now instead of the tap running into this bucket, I'm just recirculating it up and through the coil. And I've also been doing a little bit more reading on melting points of various things. And I should be able to do brass and copper. So I'm going to have a go at that. So this is the little brass ingot that I got out of the bottom of the crucible. It's a bit grotty on that side. That was the top. This is it. Uh, that was the side that's facing down good and solid. Quite pleased with that. Now to try copper. Now just for fun I filled the crucible with water. Let's see how long it takes to heat that up. Going pretty much straight to full power. We've got steam coming off it already. And that's boiling. some copper. I don't know how well this is going to turn out. Uh, it's looking pretty dark in the viewfinder here. The camera stopped itself right down. Um, melting the copper it, uh, was a little bit whiskery on top and I thought I'd like to get a nice decent ingot out of it. So it's been sitting on full power for uh, three and a half minutes now and that is glowing white hot. Um, yeah, you can see that's a bit more like what the ambient light in the room is like and when it gets to that, that is glowing. We just passed the five minute mark now and uh, I've actually finally managed to warm my capacitors up. They're uh, sitting at just on 60 degrees. So, not hugely warm, but still slightly warmer than the ambient. And yeah, the heat sinks are up around 55 degrees as well. So, 
things are getting a bit warmer. Interesting to see what comes out of here. Well, it's six minutes now and uh, I've just felt the water in the bucket here and it's starting to get quite warm as well. So hopefully she should all be melted by now. Guess we'll see. So here's my results. Uh, this was the salt, or the core that came out of the salt anyway, which is pretty nice and solid. Uh, this one is pewter, which is a mixture of tin and lead, I think. Uh, this is the copper, which actually came out reasonably well. It's quite a solid little slug, although you can still see quite a bit of, you know, it's not, not completely solid. Uh, this is the aluminium, which is in pretty similar state. It uh, actually got stuck in the crucible. The one that I was using was quite worn and old at the time and there's quite a lot of uh, graphite stuck to the surface of it but there's a nice solid core of aluminium there with a bit of oxide on the top. Uh, this is the brass which is nice and shiny on the bottom and all dull on the top. But again that's a very nice solid slug. Uh, and then these are some of the other things I played with. This was a uh, some roofing nails, which uh, I'll never do lead inside again, I think that was a mistake, but it wasn't too bad, wasn't, didn't kill me. This is a bit of the glass, and uh, it's got quite a bit of carbon infused in it, which is kind of cool. So that was nice and melted when I poured that out. Then there's an earlier failed attempt at aluminium, so that's, it's still solid, but it's, it's quite, um, I don't know what the word is for that. There's quite a bit of oxide on it as well. So yeah, all in all, that was fun. Can't wait till the parts arrive so I can rebuild it.